this is picking up from the, the last state of the drawing, which was that I had edited it in Photoshop. And uh, this is in Sketchbook Pro. Sketchbook Pro has a pretty clean interface, as I might have described before. And um, so if I'm just going to look really quickly at the, um, the layers that I have going on, I'm just going to tab this over just a little bit. So Sketchbook Pro, you know, you just click tab to um, show all the um, these interface tabs or to hide them. And I, I tend to keep them open pretty much most of the time and just, just zoom into the image a little bit. But I had uh, a couple different layers in here that were from Photoshop. I think uh, a couple of these are the background layers. Uh, that's a background copy. And I had the edits. Make sure I've got the right things on here. Background copy. Okay, this is this is what I wanted, and let's rename that. So in Sketchbook Pro, you've got this uh, radial menu. It works a little bit differently than Photoshop, so I, I could hide or lock the layers. Lots of times, if I have something that I know I don't want to delete or merge down, I'll lock it. In this case, this is going to be my edits layer, so I'm just going to call it that. Um, pretty straightforward. And um, so if you notice, I had just come out of Photoshop, and I had been using the beta version of Photoshop, which allowed us to have the the fill areas, um, generative fill, sorry. And the masks were applied there, so it was blocking out the background. But what happens is when you, you bring it into almost any other image editing program, it's not gonna show that mask. I think it's because generative fill works in a slightly different way. You've got different options that are kind of live. So there's different versions of the file stay active in Photoshop. And it means that that file is, is really, really big. So I don't tend to hang on to those very long. I'm not sure if I'm going to use either of these layers. This one was that second layer, sorry, uh, with this kind of strange image of a woman. I don't imagine I'm going to use that. It's just clogging up my file. But what was kind of cool is it did this kind of different look and feel on the top of the mech. I wasn't sure if I wanted to save any of that. The more I look at it, the more I think I do want to keep some of it. So um, what we could do here is, is I could just uh, decide to delete this whole section of this top one. I'm just going to hit delete, knock that out. Um, and I, I do like the erase features within Sketchbook Pro. Sketchbook Pro, a lot of it is driven directly through the menu. So I can just uh, go ahead and delete this section. That might be a little bit too hard. So I'm going to shift to a soft eraser. Um, I'm going to go to the brush library and um, Maybe so the brush controls are a little bit different and um, you know just find whatever works for you. Kind of like this. I can get in there. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit further. So I do have a, a pen that I'm working with on my tablet. I'm just gonna drop these out for a second. I'm gonna reduce this to the opacity controls are right on it right here. I'm just gonna drop the rest of the layers off for a second just so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I don't want to erase everything here. But I do want to erase. I'm not sure that this is going to affect it up in this section, but I'm going to go ahead and, and erase that anyway. Um, it's not that clean, but it's not going to matter in that section because the, the sky is a pretty close match to what we had before. I just want to make sure I delete all this right here. Now I know that's not super precise. I actually kind of like it working in a not incredibly precise way, which sounds strange, but I'm going to crank this back up. It looks a little weird in this section here, maybe too soft. And uh, whoops, wrong layer. Happens all the time. Delete along that and just get it kind of by feel, the way it looks nice to me and maintains the image integrity. I might have to fix that right in there. And then we get this weird chunk that's sitting out here. I kind of like that background look, so I'm going to keep that. What's going on there? Oh, okay, I see. Those colors aren't exactly a match, which is why I'm going to keep this line kind of separating them. I don't know what this junk in the background is that was in the sky, but I think I'll leave it for now. All right. It's not perfect, but uh, I can always fix that. So this was a stable diffusion image. Um, I kind of like that now, it's a little bit better. So I think I decided I'm not gonna use this woman at all. She's not really fitting into the vibe I wanted anyway. So I just use the radio menu again. In this case, just hit the trash can and delete it. 
Um, now, not dissimilar to the way I would work in Photoshop, I'm just going to make a copy of that layer and then I'm going to merge this down. Okay, good. It's already looking a little bit better. So I can see I've got my edits. I've merged. So I could have done that in Photoshop, of course. It wouldn't have to be done here. I'll show the original. The original Stable Diffusion. That's the base layer. And that's the edit. So it's already looking pretty nice. Um, whenever I'm working in Sketchbook Pro, I like to uh, make like a paint layer. So this is the kind of thing where you could do it pretty in a pretty straightforward way to clone out these sections. And I gotta be honest, the only reason I like to do it here, I mean, I like the paint controls that you get in Photoshop. So I like the artist palette. This is one of the downloadable sets you can get. My favorite are conceptual, conceptual one and conceptual two. Um, maybe a little bit hard to see here. I'm shifting between, okay, that's all right. Um, what I like about uh, working in Sketchbook Pro is first of all, you can just rotate fairly easily. You could do the same thing in Photoshop, right? But then I can just hit the I key and keep uh, kind of painting directly in that area. It's uh, pretty quick and pretty intuitive. Apologies that you might hear a little bit of clicking on the screen. I like to keep the opacity all the way up. I don't mind if it's got a little bit of a, a brushy quality to it. I'm gonna go with a slightly bigger version of the concept brush. And this allows us to kind of just knock in these areas where it was having that odd little kind of uh, dirty debris section, which yeah, it kind of, it looks cool, but I don't know what the debris is. It, it kind of made sense to me when it was closer to this mech and it didn't make so much sense when it was further away. And then I'm noticing something in here where there's this cool kind of line quality that was created in the original stable diffusion around some of the clouds. So I'm going to call this one paint, name it, and then quick extra layer, just call this one ink, um, and when I already have an image that's generated, I tend to use the, the colors that are in the file, so I want to just test and see how thick that is, um, it's a little bit too thick. so. You know, I'm just going by feel with what I tend to use in images. Like I like 3.0 and I like 5.0. This, it sounds like it's arbitrary, but it's not. It's, it's close to what I would see in like a 0.5 or a uh, millimeter, I believe it is. Um, like a Pigma pen or something like that that is a, a physical pen. I just like the, I like it to kind of look and feel about the size like I would draw with in real life. Not that this isn't real life, but you know what I mean. Digital life is your digital life, really your real life. And uh, even though it might seem like it's a little bit too hard, I can always fade it down. But I really like the just kind of pen and ink quality to this. It gives it more organic sense, and it doesn't have to match exactly. There's also a nice kind of um, ability that that um, Sketchbook Pro has. It you can give it a little bit of this is kind of set up as a, an automatic arc. Let me turn it off. Uh, what did I do wrong here? Don't know what I did wrong, but I seem not to be able to pull that. I'm not gonna worry about it. Oh, there we go. Here we go. See, it, it kind of paints along an arc. Turn, uh, turn it on, and then I'll turn it off. See, it allows you to kind of, if you don't have the best ability to keep a straight line, or not a straight line, but a a line that would follow kind of a vector path. This is kind of a nice way to do it, is to turn this on the steady stroke. Uh, I use steady stroke, mm, I would say half the time, maybe a little bit less than half the time. Uh, it's not perfect and you kind of have to follow the contours. What I find to be a little bit tricky about steady stroke is it actually works better if you don't have a tablet screen. I do have a tablet screen. If you just had a Wacom tablet that is sitting next to you, what you can't do with steady stroke, of course, because it's not really vector, you can't then um, pull it over. Uh, so I'm just going to turn it off now. Yeah, that's a little bit better for what I'm doing. It allows you to work a little bit faster if you don't have the steady stroke on. And one thing that, the, one of the reasons why I'm painting in Sketchbook Pro rather than Photoshop is, uh, what is it? 
100% crazy about this, but if if you don't like your line, you know, you could get all aggravated and <laughs> and sit here and try and repaint the line. That would be some people's way to go about it. But I find it's faster to just like, you know, very quickly move on this ink layer. So I'm just gonna, you know, make some quick lines and not worry about it a whole lot. Um, I step back to see what it looks like. I think it might be too thick in some places and too thin in others. Maybe I want it to have a slightly more wistful feel. That's a little bit better. It's definitely too hard on that top edge. Uh, let's take a look over here. Let's see what this looks like. Obviously, personal preference with what, what you like to see. But uh, what I meant by you know not getting too worried about it is because I've got it on an ink layer, and I would say that a lot of people work in a similar fashion. So then I can come on the underneath paint layer and switch back to, let's say, the conceptual brush. And then what I could do is I could just, uh, you know, paint to the edge, right? And uh, that depends on your personality. Like, I don't want to get stressed about the ink layer, so I'd rather work underneath it. And um, just get in there, get a little bit more paint on anywhere that I felt like it wasn't a direct match. I'm just gonna move along here. I felt like there probably wasn't enough of this color coming along the edge. So I'm just gonna pull some color just a little bit further down. If that's hard to see on your screen, sorry about that, because it is a subtle difference in the color. Click on here, I'm gonna get a little bit more of that lighter color in. Um, these aren't drastic edits by any means. And I think I, I messed up on the color, but I just go back and forth and add a little bit. Then I'm going to go back into the ink layer. And what I what I find is really useful is, uh, and I know I, I sound like a broken record with this, but I love the smudge. The smudge tool in Sketchbook Pro is a beautiful thing. It just kind of has this natural fade away and pull to it, um, which I really enjoy a whole lot. So I'm just going to do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little song, a little dance. And then if I'm finding that it's a little bit too heavy, of course, you got a couple options. You could reduce the opacity overall, which is not bad. I was going to say I could also erase it, but I like the look of that. Now, if I decide I want to go heavier on another ink layer, maybe a little bit back, you can do that. Uh, what's The conceptual brush is really useful. When you're coming out of Stable Diffusion or another AI tool like that, it, it might give you a little bit of variation of color, but not exactly as much as what you're looking for. So what I like to do is come in with that conceptual brush, let's make sure it's big enough, and uh, just add a little bit of highlight here and there. I'm just going to switch it here, uh, but, but, uh, that's too much. But, but, just, you know, a little, little bit here, a little bit there. Just give it kind of more painterly feeling to it, right? Just a little bit here, a little bit there. Probably hear my son and his friend screaming in the background i love it probably roblox and uh and then i'm just going to dodge it back a little bit um not actual dodge but i'll use a combination of the um the i always call it blur but it's not blur right call it blur but it is actually smudge I got it right the last time messed it up this time anyway it just gives that a little bit an extra bit of pop uh, where it's needed I don't think I'm done with that and I'm, I'm gonna do the same thing on the robot maybe I'll come back to that um, I like the way the robot is looking overall I like the kind of junkiness of it but uh, I'll continue to work that I like the way the ink is looking it's not perfect Anyway, that's a little bit of how I might use some of the paint tools and inking tools within Sketchbook Pro uh, to make the Stable Diffusion image that's been modified through Photoshop a little bit more personal. It's kind of more fitting what my style is. Anyway, that's the end of this one. It wasn't too drastic in terms of the edits, just a little bit about how I work and what I find to be useful in paint over techniques in Sketchbook Pro.